Good morning, everybody. Thank you for joining us this morning. And moving along in the overuse-related series, I will be speaking about uh, Seaver's um, disease, also known as calcaneal apophysitis. Um, I am a pediatric non-operative sports medicine physician here at Scottish Rite. We're going to start off with a case. Um, so we have a 10-year-old male who comes into your clinic, um, and he's complaining of heel pain that's worse with running, um, especially um, after soccer practices when he's running in his cleats, and the pain seems to um, resolve when he's resting. His mother states that he had a similar complaint last season during soccer season as well. So what is Seaver's disease? So it is inflammation and irritation over the calcaneal apophysis due to the repetitive traction and microtrauma of the Achilles tendon pulling um, over its bony insertion on the calcaneus. And this only occurs in skeletally immature patients, particularly who participate in a running sport. And so an apophysis, as Dr. Miller um, went over, is um, a growth center that adds contour and shape to the bone, and oftentimes a muscle or a tendon inserts. And in, the, uh, in this case, it's the Achilles tendon that inserts over the calcaneus. And the apophysis is a much weaker link, and so it's weaker than the actual tendon um, that attaches at the bony insertion, and so it frequently becomes inflamed and irritated. Um, and this is a overuse traction type phenomenon. So we examined this 10-year-old kid on an exam. He's got lots of pain over the posterior and medial aspects of his calcaneus. You squeeze the heel and it hurts. So we call that a positive squeeze test with medial and lateral compression over the calcaneal apophysis. You have him hop around in clinic and he's complaining of posterior heel pain as well. And when you examine him, he has really, really tight calf, gastroc, and Achilles uh, tendons as well. So some of the differentials that you want to keep in the back of your mind when you're examining a skeletally immature patient with heel pain, um, you know, is it a retrocalcaneal bursitis back there? Um, are you thinking of a calcaneal stress fracture perhaps? Um, an ostrigonum, which is an accessory ossicle that can sometimes live in the posterior aspect of the ankle? Is it more of a tendinosis type of thing? Um, plantar fasciitis. So these are some of the differentials um, to kind of keep in the back of your mind. So what causes and what are the risks factors for this? So again, frequently in a skeletally immature child with activity-related posterior heel pain is what they're going to be complaining of. And oftentimes the story goes that they just started a new soccer season or they just started their basketball season. So we oftentimes see it at the start of a new sport or season. And again, having tight Achilles and calf muscles can put them at increased risk due to the increased tension and the traction uh, that the Achilles is tugging on um, over the calcaneus. So these are diagnosed clinically. So it's a clinical diagnosis. Oftentimes, x-rays are completely normal. But if you do get them, they may show some increased sclerosis and fragmentation of the calcaneal apophysis on the lateral view. And so here on the left-hand side, um, you see our 10-year-old male who has a um, normal-looking calcaneal apophysis. On the right-hand side, you see that there is perhaps a little bit more increased sclerosis um, over the calcaneal apophysis um, right in this area. And this is um, the lateral um, uh, heel view of a 9-year-old soccer player. So x-rays um, typically aren't very helpful. But if you are concerned about some other bony pathology, then certainly they can be helpful. These calcaneal apophyses um, appear around 8 to 9 years of age and tend to fuse around 12 to 15 years of age. Obviously, it occurs a little bit earlier in the females um, due to um, sooner skeletal maturity than males. So pain can be constant or intermittent. I always tell patients that Seaver's disease is kind of like the Osgood's of the heel. And the presentation can be varied. And so um, I tell parents it can present in like a spectrum. So in the far left hand, you have those kids with mild and 
um, kind of going on to moderate symptoms. In the far right hand of the spectrum, there can be kids who present with very severe symptoms. And so oftentimes it's intermittent, or sometimes if it's progressed, then the symptoms can be more constant. Typically, they will complain of pain after activity, so after soccer practice, and then it can progress to pain during activity, so while they're playing sports, and ultimately, if it progresses even further, then it can um, limit their physical activity, and so they may complain of pain even with walking and, during ev and doing everyday activities. Um, at the extreme end, sometimes these kids may have difficulty ambulating, so they may walk in your office with the limp or hobbling or kind of hopping on the other side so that they are not uh, applying pressure in the um, contralateral heel. This can occur in about 50 to 60 percent of the cases on both sides of the heel and it is more common in males than females. And the peak age that we see this is around 10 to 12 years of age. So treatment is um, conservative, uh, we encourage activity modification, relative rest. Um, if the kids complain of some achiness and soreness of the heels after a soccer game or basketball practice, I say, you know, rest, ice, stretch. Um, however, if the parents are like, oh, we see them limping out in the field or in the court, they're hobbling, then in those cases I tell parents, if you see your kid limping out there, you know, bring them in, have them take a break, um, and then, you know, send them back in. Because the worst thing you want um, for it to happen is for them to fall and have another injury because they're limping and having trouble ambulating. So ice, um, I like to recommend freezing a water bottle, and then the kids can kind of do a rolling ice massage while they're sitting so that the ice kind of rolls on the bottom of their heels. The heel is kind of a difficult area to ice, and so I um, find that that works really well. Anti-inflammatories as needed. Um, we have heel cups that we also like to prescribe, and so these are um, gel heel cups that the kids can put in the back of their heels, and it does provide some comfort and relief of the traction of the Achilles kind of tugging in that area. Um, I also stress the importance of heel cord stretches, so some calf and Achilles stretches, will, um, which I will show in a little bit. Immobilization is rarely needed. However, if the kid comes in obviously limping or not wanting to bear weight on that side, then a brief course of immobilization with a boot or maybe even crutches for a little while can be um, uh, uh, beneficial for some of those kids who do have more severe symptoms. And then if all of these fail, um, then uh, physical therapy can certainly be considered as well. So on the left, these are the heel cups that I was talking about. So these are really easy. Kids can put them in their school shoes and then transfer them into their soccer cleats or um, baseball cleats, and uh, they really like them. It's easy, and they're, um, it tends to alleviate a lot of their uh, calcaneal discomfort as well, too. This is Thule's, and this is a neoprene type of ankle sleeve, and it has heel cups that are stitched into it. And so these are very helpful for those athletes who participate in barefoot sports, like our dancers and our gymnasts. And so many of our um, gymnasts who train um, you know, 10, 15 plus hours, and uh, they're skeletally immature, and they've got um, sievers, um, I will recommend this, and uh, these work pretty well. They work, they work well. Um, again, Achilles and calf stretches are very, very important. Um, you don't need any fancy equipment. Um, oftentimes we will teach them how to do towel stretches, so stretching their heel cords with um, just sitting on the ground and uh, using a towel to stretch their Achilles. Um, calf stretches um, can be done against the wall. Um, you can isolate the soleus muscle as well. Um, and then on the stairs um, or on a stepping stool, they can do um, toe raises um, to stretch their um, uh, Achilles tendon as well. So when we talk about return to play, these are self-limited conditions. Um, we reassure them that there is no long-term sequelae and return to play as symptoms allow. Um, however, if the child is limping with a sport, um, then we do um, advise resting. And you can kind of feel how the patients are. If the kid's like, oh, I, I'm still able to go out and play soccer, but the mom's like, he's just complaining of you know, heel pain after the games, then rest, eye stretching. However, if a kid is walking into your office and you notice that they've got an antalgic gait, they're having trouble ambulating, or um, clearly in discomfort, then you may consider shutting them down from the high impact related sports for um, a period of time. Um, 
cross-training on lower impact activities such as um, riding their bicycle or swimming. Those are typically good activities that the kids can do in the meantime if they are needing to take a break from their high impact activity. So some key recommendations for your practice. Always think of Seaver's disease with activity-related heel pain in a skeletally immature patient. Peak presentation is around 10 to 12 years of age. You want to really focus on the calf and Achilles flexibility, and you want to reassure that there is no long-term sequelae with this condition. Thank you very much. Do we have any questions? Dr. Ellis? Coming. <laughs> As opposed to the um, shoulder and elbow, which we think is extremely detrimental to play with pain, um, is what's your recommendation for a kid that has heel pain, whether they can play or not? Is it bad for them? Is there any long-term problems? C can they play through a little bit of pain? Yeah. So it depends on their symptoms. If it's just mild achiness and soreness while they're playing or after they're playing, I don't put any restrictions on them. And so I tell parents, it's just discomfort. Um, heel cups are really good. Stretch, you know, pre-warm up and 